welcome to this codebuddies.org live code hangout. Today we'll be continuing work on our sustainable urban design app. We are working with the client, reorganizing the interface, removing a form that lets us control the display of data properties, reactively computing buffers and merging those geometries based on the unit and distance. Removing this form over to a, a kind of a more natural position that uh, due to the kind of architecture of the, the front end components, the tree, the component tree, uh, it wasn't, it's as straightforward as just putting it here above the map. So I was able to put it here to get the basic thing working and now I need to move, I've moved the form here, but now I need to share state between uh, a component that's in a, a little bit of the tree in a different branch, or more or less is through the router. Uh, it's rendering into the, a slot in a, a parent layout. Both the, the router has two slots, one where the map is rendered and one where the form is rendered. And they need to share state so that when this, the form values change, the, uh, the geometry on the map change, similar to what's going on here. Um, I think to do this, we're just going to need a state manager or a state object at the very least. Um, I don't know if adding view X is overkill at this point, but it's probably a good thing to learn. And this project is taking a lean approach, trying not to add complexity as, uh, until it's needed, uh, adding frameworks and libraries until we need them. So we added a, a front end JavaScript front end framework because it's a, this is a pretty it's an interactive application, it's much more interactive than um, would be produced by the static rendering uh, of, of Django with a little bit of sprinkles of JavaScript. That'll take it quite far, and most projects I, I would argue can uh, be achieved just with Django and, and a little bit of JavaScript. But uh, for these interactive geo computations. Uh, we're using the Vue.js front end, so we get some reactive data binding and declarative, um, you know, template definitions. Uh, we're using HTML, which is a declarative language, and then um, we're able to compute these um, buffers and union functions reactively when, essentially, when the OpenStreetMap data come into the template or when the uh, buffer um, distance, uh, buffer geometry is changed when the buffers get computed, which happens when the OpenStreetMap data are in the interface or when the reactive property is changed, buffer distance or buffer units. So that'll re-trigger this buffer computation, which then in turn triggers the union to dissolve those geometries and then they get rendered into the map. So yeah, that's why I think um, with this level of uh, interactivity, uh, uh, it, a front-end framework is, um, is a good addition. And then we get this really nice um, UI component library with Quasar, Material Design UI component library. Okay, so that's where we're at and where we're going is just to share the state between these two um, components. And I think we might, if there's time, Mm, look at just basic routing because essentially these each should be their own kind of view and when you click on one it probably would uh, append a path to the URL and then the router would actually retrieve OpenStreetMap data that's relevant to the category you're looking at so food, housing, transportation. Transportation would show a road network for example perhaps. All right, let's dig in. This is not a tutorial. I should have said that a few moments ago, but uh, this is a live coding how. If you're interested in just to see how things turn out, I try to summarize the videos with uh, about 10 minutes before, uh, 10, uh, well, it takes a little bit, 10 to 20 minutes to summarize them at the end of the session. So you can scroll to the end of the session, watch for the blue Code Buddies intro, and uh, I'll just summarize what changes we made. So we're going to have to read up on Vuex. And 
And I think even the Vuex documentation mentions that. Vuex is not for every project. And that there's actually a store pattern you can use. It's in the view docs. All right, so let's go ahead and try Vuex. So let's see if it's installed. It's not. I think we're using Yarn. I've seen, for example, the router registers with view. Where's it registering with view? All right up here in its own <coughs> in its own folder. So we might just uh, create a state directory with an index.js. I don't think we'll need multiple state objects, but you never know. I mean, I don't want to, again, premature optimization is an anti-pattern. So I either need to just register state down here, state.js. I don't know how <coughs> conventional this is. So looks like it found view X. Um, We'll just create a basic store just to see if we get to some changes. Uh oh, four space and dense.
that's it. Not very JavaScripty. All right. So if we're registered and we got some state, I think uh, it should show up here, right? I don't know. Wait a minute. So, <coughs> ah, okay. And then you associate it with the view app. All right, where do we do this? One of the confusing things about Quasar is the scaffolding doesn't really uh, define a new view app. See if there's a quick guide in Quasar's UX documentation. Mm -hmm, this was kind of thing. I think that we should do. So actually, Quasar is going to do this for us. Let me just sort of follow its way of doing things here. Okay, so let's take a look at, so it's actually created several, whoops, uh, several files there.
I guess they don't like trailing semicolons. I know it's uh, optional. Yeah, this level of sort of complexity or uh, I guess it's ceremony and it mentions in the BX docs that it's going to feel awkward at first. Um, and I think that's the trend in JavaScript in general is just like the everything feels awkward at first, but I think in general we just kind of suffer, th people, a lot of people just suffer through it and uh, simplicity is not an option. And it's all done in, with good, like ostensibly good purpose, but man. Like getters and setters almost, I would think, just should be off, off, <laughs> automatically generated state. So we've got a state. This is creating our Vuex store with our, our state here. It's a dictionary, so we're looking good. It's just a more complicated one. Now we need getters, so well, let's make a getter. Getter should be a dictionary, so this is kind of weird.
find it all here. We're trying to straighten some modules. So state should be a function. Yeah, I think it's good to have state one state object for each page. That makes sense. And I was naturally going to do that. The state would more or less have been located in the component tree for each page. So this is a, it's congruent with that idea, of just having to move it into a, a centralized state container. So these mutations are it's a dictionary of named uh, of functions, I think, right? Home command. It just would help me right now to um, not have this all spread across multiple files. I guess getters is just a dictionary with all of those functions, so get uh, map unit. Buffer unit. And having it spread out like this, it, it means uh, I don't get auto-completion. I can't kind of, I have to rely a lot on memory to jump around. So yeah, this is not, this is not ideal. Hopefully, I'll keep my state simple. But yeah, buffer distance. Perfect. need mutations
All right, so we got getters, uh, mutations, state, registered it, actions. Just give me a simple. Example of passing an argument So you pass in a context dictionary. And having a an example that carries across the code examples would help too so you don't have to kind of guess and put too much together
Maybe all I need is mutations. Maybe actions are unnecessary. I think the actions is like a sort of implementation detail allowing asynchronous code or mutations are allowing asynchronous code. And it's just kind of like an example of how warty things can get, how complicated things can get when these implementation details link leak into like the user interface. And by this, I mean the developer, the way the developer has to write their code. You know, and for a while, Vue does, does a pretty good job of keeping most of the complexity uh, abstracted, like the reactivity and stuff like that, and just allowing the developer to pretty much just write regular web standard HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, more or less, you know, with some template syntaxes that align with those standards and don't kind of throw it out or reinvent it. Yeah, but this is just a problem, and I think it's not inherent. inherent I don't know. I don't think it's inherent to web development or complexity. I just think we haven't found the right way to simplify this. Okay, let's see if I can just get the drawer state from the computer function. I'll get the uh, close action for now. You know, almost the getters are superfluous too at this point. If I can just access it directly and set it using the mutation, which I'm cool with that. I understand that at least the mutation has to fire so that you can track the state changes over time. But less is more here, so I'm going to just hopefully just will work without these, because I mean these getters are just re redundant, just returning the value. And that's simply what they're doing here. All right, so let's hop back over to let's see here. I think I had the default one set. Uh, guess I can look in the components. Um, Pages actually, map page, um, buffer distance. So I did set it initially. So in our state, let's just set that buffer distance to like three and then miles. That way we're going to have something different. And then in our, instead of the map component, we're going to be working on the map page. I'm going to move this over to the components. This is, I don't think the concept of pages is necessary either. Either less is more. So now we're going to want computed functions. And this, we might want to make sure that the user only ever s selects one of those um, buffer units. So that could be something that a, set, uh, a setter or a, an action would help us help us with in order, order to validate the user input. OK, so let's see. Gears. No, no, computers, computed. We need two computed properties, and these are functions. I'm just
now. We'll refresh. I think it should already refresh. Uh, nope. Oh, the app's not running. Maybe these uh, ECMAScript proxies will make state management easier in the future. Okay. No, I didn't. No, I don't have to import it. Let me just refresh until we get the data back because these. Whatever's going on with the data and not loading transform multi polygon. Yeah, it's like trying to do that before the data are available. So something here. I mean, surprised that would be necessary. All right, so now we have a different error. That's good. Uh, let me double check. Now, back to the map, we essentially want this same properties here. Is it computed? Yes.
Oh, I see what I did wrong. So just come back here. So we don't need that. And we don't need that. And if I save, it should lint it. And then we don't need that because they're colliding. Now we got three miles. Yes. All right. Now we don't need these widgets anymore because it's synchronizing the state. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, all right. It's not going to set the, the thing yet. Uh, I can take these. This here. I can take that out of the view. Map returns to its full glory. Hey, what's up, Blue Haze? How you doing? You know, uh, you're totally welcome to chat. That's why I'm streaming, so we can chat. So pardon me if I didn't notice your message earlier. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure what to do there. I would, uh, if it's extortion, you'd contact your pol local local authorities, contact the police, and they'll know what to what how to proceed with that. Uh, do not pay any money or any gift certificates or anything to the people who claim to have or have hacked you. Do not. Um, that's the best advice I think I can give. to ah yes so I need to set that when this hmm changes Get in the set in here. Hmm, interesting. All right, now how to fix these things later. But so, in my computer buffer distance and buffer units, we define. Find them as a dictionary. And this would be the get. This is interesting, I've never done this before. What do we got here? Yes. More or less. It's get. Uh, set. Yeah, I just think uh, yeah, I'm not sure uh, how to help you there. You'll have to just disconnect your computer. Yeah, change your hardware. And uh, back up your files and format your operating system. Reboot. Uh, don't use Windows. <laughs> I don't know if that's fair, but I believe I think it's uh, so units equals so store commit. <laughs> and then commits a function, so it's just gonna be set buffer distance. Function name. 
food. I'm in the wrong file. Uh, because that's never going to be mutated here. So let's go ahead and revert that back. There we go. And I actually need to mutate that here. I, uh, I don't <laughs> doubt it sucks. I, I can't totally relate. I haven't had that happen to me, but uh, yeah, I, I can sympathize. Uh, it's, yeah, it's got to feel just really kind of, you know, to have somebody in your webcam all the time and it's, yeah, and going through your personal files and whatnot. And, and sometimes you're powerless. And yeah, so I don't want to seem dismissive. I just don't have really any good uh, practical advice other than don't pay people, don't pay extort insurers and get the local authorities in, involved if possible if you're comfortable with that. I know it's not always um, the right thing to do depending on where you're located or your life situation and stuff so that's not 100% but I think just the conventional thing and not paying people for extortion like these um, um, what do they call the people who lock your computer they encrypt all your files and they demand a ransom ransomware attack I guess is what it is. You know when you pay that those people they're Essentially, you're rewarding the behavior, so. Okay, let's check out the, uh, the actions. Drink some nice tea. So yeah, where do they define this? Ah, uh, update. Oh, mutation, not action. So I did define that, let me just check it. Set buffer distance. Mm, I think we're good to go. So really the buffer distance now should be synchronized between... Ah, I should have left it in. Well, I can put the widget back in there. Because I only need to see the changes. Hmm. All right, there we go. Can look ugly, but this one I change should also update over there. Yeah, yeah. And then the units. I'll get to them in a second. Uh, but anyway, Blue Haze, what else is up with you? Uh, do you have a restoration disk on your, on your, for your computer? Can you reinstall the OS? Um, can you? This is out a little bit left uh, field, but can you think about switching to Linux? Um, what do you use your computer for mainly? If it's gaming, then I understand you wouldn't really be able to switch to Linux uh, unless you're just playing Kerbal Space Program, uh, which runs on Linux. All right, so now we get to get the miles running there. So yeah, the buffer unit system is going to be the same pattern. becomes a dictionary. Units. We're going to be using units. Units. And the buffer units. Units, units, units. And what was this multi cursor deal? How do we do that again? Yikes. Control Shift D. No. Haven't used it in a while. 
unit Everybody's good. Go away, run. All right, and the map then needs to use the buffer units. It is. Then basically, good, we've got two-way sync. That means I can take these widgets back off and troubleshoot why the data is giving me this silly errors, silliness. But essentially, if I uncomment this now, I commit the code. By the way, are you from, are you from Kansas City or is your name KC? Oh, yeah, so now we can just see over here. Nine oh eight oh it is working kilometers boing brilliant that is a small success So we got some changes. What did we do? A whole bunch of stuff state related. Very cool. So we're at one hour. The other thing I can do, hmm. I don't have these other views in place. We pretty much got the whole pattern done. This PR is done. I, I think I can probably take a break. Relax for the evening. The next thing we'll do will be uh, to get routing happen. When you, I don't know what the default will be. Right now, the default thing is just to render in this um, kind of food layer, uh, but we don't have um, these other layers. Like um, they're not layers; they're kind of like facets or something. They're ways of viewing an urban environment based on livability essentially how comfortable it is to people to live and access amenities and we're defaulting to this food one because that was the first one I worked out I guess I can try to do this uh, see if I can debug those the data loading thing if I, if I cold re hard reboot it and once it warms up there we go can I read property call it undefined and so that's when it's trying to buffer hmm it's like running the buffer prematurely and it has the data then it tries to buffer it. So what I can think I can do is just Start as undefined. I mean, false is false, right?
the other thing I'm, that might be the problem is I need to wrap I mean this should not render this feature or style uh, layer if the data are not available so but if I wrap it in a div that would maybe be extra protection yeah because it's still doing it The weird thing is it was able to calculate these buffers, but not render the, the OSM data. Uh, no, this is VF. It blinks out. It's like there and gone. Now it's there. The only other thing I can think is, oh yeah, I can move the uh, data fetching to the to the router. This is doing on mounted, so on rendered maybe. That could be it. Oh, really? Shouldn't matter if it's rendered or mounted. Uh, because mounted, it can fetch these things asynchronously. Let me see about passing in this. Uh, hmm. It's like if there's no features, it shouldn't be getting any. If there's no OSN data, what? If, uh, See why this wouldn't be necessary. It's 
like it's already rendered everything and I'm still getting errors. This is so weird that just sometimes it doesn't render it. And I get these errors. Cannot read features of undefined. Where are we trying to read features? Ah.
trying to, I mean, I'm catching every place. So first I check the OSM data is not undefined, then I check that the features are under, uh, not undefined, and I use the features. In the polygon, I check for the union, but so let's double check the functions out. First I check uh, the OSM data, now it goes in one. is not helpful. truthy value under not equals undefined is falsy, right? Maybe that's it. This whole time I've been using the wrong syntax, but I thought you could prefix those with a semicolon or a colon or the uh, VF statement. Clear. Hard refresh. <laughs> this is the kind of stuff that is just grating. It's just mind boggling. And you know, I don't mind if it's chalk, if it's something that I'm doing wrong. But to not have any really kind of clear guidance, it, it should not be. So I got a B if some statement, right? It won't render that. That's an expression.
this should work. I mean, that's what we're saying here. The data are undefined as a false C value. I think it's talking about this features zone undefined. Where is that? Leave it alone. Use VF is all we V if it's all we did here. Good stopping point. So once seventeen, we'll do a quick summary and call it a, call it a day. Hmm. Just now noticed Imperium was in here earlier. Right. Sorry about that, Imperium. I'm sure I didn't see your message. It's weird. I responded to Blue Haze, but uh, didn't see you. My bad. Just have to catch them next time. Hello, and welcome to the recap of today's live code hangout. With <laughs> ah, let me try this again. Let's give it a little bit of a spacer there. Hello and welcome to this codebuddies.org live code hangout. Good grief. <laughs> I'm just tired. I'm supposed to be resting today. Let me get things a little bit better organized here. Actually, let me open up the files. So state, and we have mutations and uh, the index. Index here. And that code is kind of hairy, but we'll take a look at it. Map, and then we used it. Index, index, state, mutations. Hmm. 
map and food menu. Very cool. Send a message to Imperium, apologizing for the oversight. All right, let's do this. I've got all the files ready, and I'll demo it. Close that so I don't see what's up here. Hide that. Here we go. Welcome to the recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. Today we've been organizing our user interface a little bit on the JavaScript client for our web um, mapping application. Essentially, it's a, an interactive application to explore urban environments for various um, sustainability criteria and livability criteria. Here, we're uh, essentially looking at a map of food sources in Tampra and a uh, kind of a buffer around those food sources of you know reasonable like catchment, how many houses they can serve more or less conveniently. And there's missing data here. There certainly are more um, food sources around. Uh, I think I've got the data clipped to a rectangle just to keep things simple while I'm working with it. Previously, in order to get these buffers working, I had a form up here that had a couple of um, parameters, buffer distance in miles. And uh, today we moved the um, form over to this inspector view and you know had to wire up a little bit of a state manager so that uh, it can communicate across components there in different branches of the tree their parent they share a parent I guess the router is controlling these but uh, uh, their their local state is not uh, gonna to my knowledge be easy to to share so when the state changes here the map wouldn't know about it so we added view X and uh, essentially allowed these, uh, defined a more or less a global state uh, for this particular you know, page or view, the food, um, food view of our, of our app. Each, each of their own views could have its own state, which is pretty cool. And I guess they call them state modules. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. Um, we're using the Quasar framework to help us scaffold the app, and Quasar is um, pretty. It brings a lot of uh, nice features, like helping you build, um, like more or less hybrid mobile apps and things like that. And like the View CLI, it's got scaffolding commands. So we told um, Quasar to scaffold a UX store called Food, and that um, the idea here is that you don't. As, comp, uh, as uh, applications get more complicated, they sometimes having a global store with everything gets really hard to reason about and hard to maintain. So by defining s kind of state modules, you can have a uh, relevant state you know, to on a smaller scale, which is pretty much what we're after. Originally, I was hoping that I could just somehow share state directly between these uh, by defining them in the same template or on the same view component almost, uh, which would be the equivalent. But in any case, I. I think we've come to a, a pretty good um, compromise. Just have to learn how things are done. This is all w new to me. So essentially, Vuex uh, or Quasar scaffolded all of this. It um, creates a new Vuex store and defines a module based on the name that I provided and Im does the imports and everything. And it defines a folder here with several files. Um, I think it's a little bit overkill for our initial um, purposes, but in any case, we have an index file in there that exports a default dictionary uh, that takes, um, they split out all the state into the dictionary components. So, um, getters, setters, uh, or getters, mutations, actions, and the state uh, function. So, we ended up only using the state function, which returns a dictionary of our two state 
properties. So each of these fields is, con is responsible for one of the state properties. And define some mutations that essentially, uh, they're functions that run that allow view and view x to track the state over time, and you can roll it back and things like that. And really all we're doing is just taking a new value and replacing the old value. So these aren't anything complicated, but you can do any kind of synchronous code here, uh, like validation and stuff like that. And if you need asynchronous code, then you can even go up a layer to using actions. But since we're doing things synchronously here, uh, mutations takes us as far as we need. Then what we needed to do is update our both of our view components. So the food menu is essentially what's responsible over here for rendering this um, menu here. It just has two inputs, a quasar input, a, a quasar input and a quasar select, that is. They're bound to a local model, which is um, actually where's the uh, buffer units? Uh, here we are. They're using these computed properties instead of. There was originally part of the the data model, but we since we're using the state, then we need to uh, use computed properties. So inside of these computed properties, you define getters and setters because this module is also responsible for updating or for setting the new values. So to get it, we just ask the store state from the food module and get the value of that property we're after. And likewise, if you want to set it, we define a mutation in the food module called set buffer distance. So it just finds the food mo module right here and then it knows to use the mutation here it just does that kind of a little bit magically but also kind of ver verbosely but I can understand why you need to define these getters and setters and the same thing for the buffer units so getting it and setting it with a new value setting it calls the uh, function where you can update the original state with the provided units uh, from there we could now clean up our our um, our map component here it is so we removed the form components that were here previously and um, essentially we're switching everything now over to computed units rather than having local state uh, local data attributes and it's the same pattern though to get it you just call the state and get the value directly from the state. That way it's reactive when it updates, it changes. And um, now the code in the, com the uh, derived um, functions where we, where we derive the buffers and we create the union of those so it kind of dissolves the overlapping buffers. Didn't have to change really at all because it, the computed properties and data properties are treated equally. They don't have any like namespacing, so that was nice. The only other changes here, I've been chasing my tail on this weird error where we're getting some console errors about not being able to access you know, various properties like features of undefined. Uh, we're, and we are using um, properties features. So at some point either buffers is undefined or uh, I'm not sure exactly. I, I can't really get down to it. So I've just put checks throughout the whole all of the code uh, everywhere I can think uh, I can think of to check that it's not undefined. Uh, and even in our templates, I'm, I've had these VFs like it shouldn't render the the components if the data aren't there. So that was seemed obvious to me, but um, still getting uh, errors. So hopefully it won't be a problem in production. It, I just don't understand what's causing it, causing those errors. Uh, but right now everything is rendered. It's just every, like so often I'll refresh and uh, one of the layers won't render even though the data are available. For example, this points layer won't render but the buffers and will render meaning like the buffers were able to be derived from the points but the points aren't layering in there and I've got a weird error about something can't re access features of undefined. So I don't know, kind of those things like make you want to pull out your hair a little bit sometimes or scream into a pillow or I don't know, <laughs> hopefully not. Uh, get too stressed out, but that's why we keep a nice warm cup of tea and just take a break if uh, things get too frustrating and come back to it with a, maybe a night's sleep or something like that. Anyway, today we're at a really good stopping point. We got things working 
and the way I was hoping to do it. So thanks for your time. This has been a CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. If you'd like to get involved with this or other projects, stop by CodeBuddies.org. There's a lot of great uh, groups forming on CodeBuddies for all different types of uh, technologies, either React or just general JavaScript, Vue.js, you know, in that family, or Python and data science, Ruby on Rails, Java, job interview prep, you name it. There's a bunch of, of uh, groups forming and uh, there's at least a couple of hangouts every day. So if you just want to hang out and see what other people are up to and, and learn how uh, to make open source software, or it's a great community to get involved with. Also, the Code Buddies platform is open source. You can stop by github.com slash Code Buddies to check on the progress of the new generation Code Buddies platform. I believe there are a lot of open issues that are good for newcomers. And uh, they have fairly extensive documentation to help you get up and running with a development environment. All right, well, thanks for your time. Have a great day and stay well out there.